Rising blocks, a eurythmic experience. Everybody had their cards, A, B, C, or D. It will be multiple choice. There will be four EKGs, class participation. A very Brady Christmas. Everyone remember this cast of characters? They all have heart rates of less than 60. So anyway, everyone remembers this cast of characters. Yes, I had a crush on Jan. Props and kudos once again. Life in the Fast Lane, ECG Weekly, and Dr. Amal. ECG Weekly is a little website that could. Use my promo code, Haber16. Disclosures, once again, I get nothing from everyone. Okay? Cases. Basically, 57-year-old, weak and lightheaded. Look at your things, and it's going to be a multiple choice. And then we have a little time. Suspend. So what's the rhythm? Sinus bradyo with first degree AV block, junctional escape, Mobitz 2, or third degree heart loss. Show me some cards. You want to say A? Okay, okay, we'll give you a second. Okay. I know it's fast. I've been doing this for 33 years. I look at EKGs quickly. Any A's? Any B's? Any C's? Or any D's? Got a D. Got a D in the back. I know anything. You know EKGs. Okay. We're going to get along well. We should work together sometime. 59-year-old with palpitations. It's a little tricky one. A little tricky one. Rhythm. Sinus bratty. Sinus with APCs. RSR with Mobitz 1. RSI with sinus pauses. Any A's? I know I'm rushing, but the repeat is coming soon. And we're going to go over all of them. Any A's? Got an A? A couple A's? Any B's? Any C's? Got a C? Got some purple C's? Okay. And an A-B's? Okay. Good. This is one of the most complicated EKGs I've ever seen. I had to go to a model for help with this one. This is a 60-year-old on calcium channel blockers who's weak and dizzy. All right? If anyone could give me the complete answer on this one, I'll buy you there. The complete answer on this one. This is an incredibly complex thing. It looks ho-hum on first glance. It really looks ho-hum, but it really is an incredibly complicated EKG. So, sinus with junctional prematures. Any A's? Got an A. Any B third degree heart block? Any C's, uh, signs with a Mobitz 2? Got a typo. In, and how about any, none of the above? Yeah, well, here's the other thing for test taking. When some idiot puts in none of the above, you know it's always going to be none of the above. And, and I already told you there's a trick. So, but anyway, it's going to be none of the above. You want to take a shot right now? Sure. Say again. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Almost. I may give you credit anyway. Almost. Almost. And I'll tell you we were just missed a slide, but that is really, really very, very close. Oh, I don't have my glasses. Yeah, okay, you're <laughs> and you don't have calibers. No, that's really good. I'm I'm impressed. So kudos for you. Okay, so we got that one. And here's a dizzy with near C. You did better than I did, by the way, on that. So when I first saw that EKG, dizzy and near syncope. You want to work in Florida, by the way? You want to work in Florida? I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee I'll raise your tag. <laughs> I do not have no, I do not have residents. Uh, I have PA residents. Dizzy and near syncope. Is it sinus bratty? Sinus rhythm with Mobitz one. Sinus rhythm with Mobitz two. Third degree heart block. Any A's? Any B's? Any C's? And we don't care. Any D's? Okay. Well, we'll go through it. Again, now the core content. Interaction time is over. Now you got to listen. ECG interpretation, again, same system, same every time. Rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, and ischemia. First talk, we did ischemia. Today, we're going to talk about rate and rhythm. And of the rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, ischemia, hypertrophy, what's the hardest one? The hardest one to start out. Take a guess. Rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, ischemia, or enlarge. What's the most difficult? 
I think rhythm. I think rhythm. I mean, ischemia, you know, you've got certain things you look for. I think rhythm is the most complicated. Because things are all over the place. That's my, I think ischemia is second. So let's talk about the rate first. You've got pacemakers in your heart. You've got the SA node that fires at 60 to 100. If that doesn't work, your AD node takes over at 40. If that doesn't work, the ventricles take over at 25 to 30. Those are the electrical pacemakers in your heart. They control the rate. Let's look at bradycardia. When we talk about these rates and rhythms, we're talking about the QRS. We're talking about the ventricle. The QRS represents what the ventricle is doing, the meat and potatoes. If you have an atrial flutter with an atrial rate of 300 and a ventricular rate of 40, you are bradycardic. You treat based on the QRS. So bradycardic is a QRS rate of less than 60. And it's a very simple algorithm to go through rate and rhythm if you're bradycardic. Question number one. Are there P waves? That's not always as simple as it asks. The P waves are like Pokemon. P waves are Pokemon. P for Pokemon. They hide. Where do P waves hide? They hide in EV1. They hide in your QRS. If you've got a QRS that doesn't look like any of the others, there may be a P wave in there. They hide before and after the QRS, and they hide in T waves. If you have a T wave that doesn't look like the, any of the others, it could be what we call a pokey T wave, and there could be a P wave in there and look at all the leads looking for P waves. This whole session is going to be a search. Remember spot, let me know search of. This is going to be a search of P waves. Okay? We're going to find those little devils. And everybody, please, how many people here own calipers? $12. You're $300,000 in debt. If you're doing the index card thing and putting the markers on and flying the index card across, please don't. That's on top of this one. That's $32. That's $32. Yeah, that's 30 That's actually 15 if you use my discount. So I got you up to 20 cents. I spent more on that on the pizza. So come on. Get calories, please. Amazon.com. Anyway, first question, P waves, yes or no? Regular or irregular wire now? So let's break that down. Bradycardia, what's the rhythm? You're right. P waves absent. Regular or irregular wire now? Easy peasy. If there are P waves present, you got to ask yourself one, actually two questions. But the most important question, are the P waves married to the QRSs? Now, and you answer it by two questions. These are two separate yet distinct questions. Is every P followed by a QRS? If no, you have too many Ps. You have blocked. You have dropped Ps. That's called ECG polyuria. That's what I'm on to it. Is every QRS preceded by a P? It's not the same question. If no, you have PDCs that are coming out of nowhere, you have extra Bs. So if every P is not followed by a QRS, that's too many Ps. If every QRS is not preceded by a P, that's too many QRSs. Huge, ginormous difference. Not the same question. And then it's, it's QRS irregular or irregular, and if it's irregular, is it regularly irregular or irregularly irregular, a.k.a. clumps. Clumps are regularly irregular is the QRS wide or now. So we're going to take this algorithm now. Again, screen right. P waves are absent. If you have a bradycardia and you don't see P waves, it can only be three things. Narrow and regular, junctional escape. Narrow and between wide and regular, ventricular escape. And irregular, wide or narrow is eight there. So the slow ventricular. That's it. If you don't have P waves and you're bradycardic, them's the only options on the menu. On the left, P waves are present. You're bradycardic. If every P is followed by a QRS, and every QRS is preceded by a P, the P's and the QRS's are married in bliss. That is sinus bradycardia. Everything else is ECG polyuria, where the P waves are not followed by QRS's. I'm going to leave off the QRS is not preceded by P's here. So if the P waves are not, every P is not followed by QRS, you go to ECG polyuria, and the only things it can be is A-flutter, Mobitz 1, Mobitz 2, third degree heart block, and sinus rhythm with block ABC. I'm going to go over how to ferret those out. So just follow the algorithm every time you cannot miss. So let's look at ECG polyuria. You're bradycardic, you have P waves, but every P is not followed by a QRS. You have too many P's. You have block P's. You're in the bradys and blocks. Two things you have to check. Number one, PP intervals. Are those PP intervals regular. And then once they are, once you check that, you have to check the PR intervals. And here's how this works. 
left screen, to your left, the PPs are regular. Check the PR interval. If the PR interval goes small, long, 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 then drop, that's MOBIS 1. That's way too bad. If the PR is a constant, then drop, that's MOBIS 2. That's a higher grade block than MOBIS 1. If the PRs are random, that's third degree heart block slash AB dissociation. Okay? If the PPs are irregular, that they don't map out, that's sinus rhythm with APCs that are blocked. That's a different, that's not a block that needs treatment. So it's very important. The first thing is do the PPs map out. I'm going to look at some cases about that. So we're going to probably go the rest of the way with an ECG polyura. So now let's look at the ones where the P waves are out. No P waves, slow, narrow. This is junctional. This is junctional rhythm. Usually rates around 40, but it's faster. It's a junctional skip. It's an accelerated junction. P waves are absent, ventricular. It's between 25 and 30 to two the wide, it's still regular. P -way, these are easy P's. P waves absent, this is a fib with slow and slow ventricular spots. Either wide or narrow. P waves absent, piece of cake. P waves are present, but every P is followed by a QRS, and every QRS is preceded by a P. So the P's of QRS is a blissfully married. This is sinus bradycardia. That's easy too. Now let's go to P waves present in ECG polyuria. Here you have drop P waves. That P wave is dropped. That P wave is dropped. Now if I had the Amama 2, magic calipers, P, 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 even the drop one, map out. So the PR, if you look, the PRs are getting longer, 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 and then they drop. Every fifth P is dropped. That's MOBIS 1, usually benign. This is P wave present ECG polyuria. The P waves map out, P, 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 and the PR are the same, and you have a drop. That's MOBIS 2. This is third degree heart block. You have drop P's, the PR intervals are all over the place. That's AE dissociation, third degree heart block. This is the one where the P's don't map out. This is the APC. P to P, but if you did that, it would come over here. The P is hidden in that T wave, that circle. Look at the morphology of that T wave and compare it to the previous one. They're different. So the block, the P wave is hidden in, that's a pokey T wave. The P wave is hidden in that T wave. You see the circle T wave? As opposed to the T wave before and the T wave after, they look different. That's because there's a P wave in there. And the PPs don't map out. This is not a block that requires a pacemaker. This is an APC that's not conducting because the QRS is refractory. So you never want to put that in the CCU or in the ICU and tell your cardiologist that you need to pace me. Fix the potassium, fix the magnesium, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now we've got it. Let's go to our cases. So this patient is bradycardic. So question number one, are there P's? Da, 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 da. I circled all the P's. Boy, here are all the P's. The P waves are hiding in the QRS. They're hiding in the T waves. They're all over the place. But if you did your magic calipers, so this is ECG polyuria. So the question you have to ask, do the P's map out? P, 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 and they do. You have your calipers, all the P's map out. The next thing you have to look at is the PR interval. And they are all over the place. So what is this? This is a third degree heart block. Maybe dissociation. This patient either needs to be off their beta block or whatever or get a pacemaker. Everyone with me? ECG polyuria, P's map, PR's all over the place. Done. Third degree heart block, AV dissociation. Case number two, bradycardic. Are there P waves? Yes. Do the P waves, is every P followed by a QRS? Is it? Here's what's going on here. There are hidden P waves. Look at the third, on the rhythm strip, look at the second T wave. It looks different than the first. There's a P wave hidden in there. You have ECG polyuria. So now, we have ECG polyuria, you have drop P's. You have to look, do the PP's map out? And they do. P, 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 P. So P's map out. So what is the PR interval doing? It's getting longer. Look at beat one, look at beat two, then you have a drop. This is a moment to one with a three to two. Every third P is hidden in a T wave and it's dropped. The clue to this, the clue to this, if you look at the rhythm, let's go back, without the knee circling the P waves, 
Is it regular or irregular? It's irregular, but regularly irregular. Clump of two, clump of two, clump of two, clump of two, clump of two. Regular or irregular is always MOBITS1, MOBITS2, or APCs. So this is our regularly irregular rhythm and the hidden P waves. So you got to look for those hidden P waves. This is a benign rhythm. This person can go home. It's not. Look at the P. Look at the PR. Let me just do. It's not. Wait, wait, here, this PR interval is shorter than that PR, and then it drops, and the pattern repeats itself. Yeah. Again, Amal has better examples than I do. He's better at the reproductive process. Now what? Right, because the P's map out. This P, if you had magic calipers, this maps. They all map. If this P was over here, and these PRs were constant, then it would be a APC block because a refractor. That's the question number one. But if you had calipers, the P's map. You map them. First you got to find them, then you got to map them, and then you got to check the PR interval. The whole exercise is a Pokemon game. Where are the P waves? And then are they married? This is the case if you've got complete credit. Almost complete credit. Are there P waves? I circled them. Here are the P waves. Okay. Are there P waves? Is every P followed by a QRS? No. This one right here is hidden and not followed by a QRS. So you've got ECG polyuria. What are the PR in a not What are the P's? What are the PP doing? Do they map out? Yes, every P maps out. What are the PR intervals doing? They're all over the place. So this is third degree block aging association, except look at this beat right here. This one and this one. What are those? They look different. The QRS looks different. What are those beats? Those are normally conducted. So what you have here, you almost nailed it. It's a sinus bradycardia with an accelerated junctional escape with AV dissociation with intermittently conducted atrial beats. And not PACs. This is not a PAC. This is a normal beat that, that's conducted. So you're, you have transient AV dissociation. Well, you're not in refractive group. You're in the P wave here, and then you're conducting that beat right there. Well, you remember your P wave is this is outside the refractory zone of this. Like an APC. If it was closer, it wouldn't conduct. I'm not an electrophysiologist, but this QRS is outside of the refractory of this QRS. Yeah, it has to be outside the refractory. So what you're getting here is, and interestingly in these AV dissociation cases, the sinus rhythm is usually faster than the ventricular. Here it's a sinus bradyvalve. The, the P wave is going at 58. The QRSs are going at 65. So you have a sinus bradycardia, a junctional, a junctional escape with transient AV dissociation with intermittent conducted beats. The two beats, beats 4 and 10 are conducted normally. But it's not APCs, but the P waves map out. So you were like 98% right. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed. You did better than I did when I looked at it. So good for you. Case number 4. Bradycardia, are there P waves? Yes. Is every P followed by a QRS? No. So you have ECG polyuria. Do the P waves map out? P, 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 yes. So they end up, what, what, what's the PR interval doing? You can't tell. But the, you can't tell. So this is actually a MOBIT with two to one block. You can't tell if this is a one or two because you only have two beats in the cycle. So you can't tell the PR. It's probably, this was treated like a type two because the patient was symptomatic. But technically by the purists, you can't tell if this is a MOBIT one or MOBIT two because you only have two beats in the cycle. In the, in the um, first case we had, in this case, you can tell it's a, it's a MOBIT one because there's three beats in the cycle. There's three beats in the cycle. 
you can't tell, it, it, it's a technicality. I would treat this, especially with the patient being symptomatic, I would treat this in moment two, assume it's the higher grade block. So this patient's not a patient. But technically by the book, it's a moment to two to one, and you can't tell the difference. So that's the algorithm for bradycardia. Bradycardia, are there P's? No. Junctional escape, ventricular escape, a fifth. Yes, there are P waves. Every P followed by a QRS is every QRS followed by a P. If yes, it's a sign of bradycardia. If not, you have ECG polyuria. If you have ECG polyuria, what do the PPs do? The PPs map out. It's more with one, more with two, or complete heart block. Check the PR intervals. If the P's don't map out, you have APCs. Look for regularly irregular clumps. Those are always MOBITs or APCs. And you'll break down every... The only thing I didn't go into is when you have more than one QRS morphology, you have different types of QRSs, that's way complicated, not really appropriate for here. And I didn't really break down the extra beats where every QRS is not preceded by a P, but I figure that's enough. So I'm going to open up the floor to questions about anything we talked about today, anything about life in general. I'll ask you a trick question, by the way, I already asked over here. When you're working in a community emergency department, what's the best way to get yourself on the do not fire list? The only, the only sure-proof way of getting yourself on the do not get canned list. Anyone have a shot? Dirt on your, uh, sure. Dirt on your chairman, that, that's good. Doing the schedule. Yeah. Number 100% when you defibrillate your medical director. <laughs> and I know that from experience because I defibrillated mine.